By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And this episode is a little bit different than you are used to. We don't have a top 10. We don't have a magic battle for you. Today, uh, we are actually going to look at the opening of a Fallen Empire booster pack, followed by me rambling on about the set and showing my Fallen Empire collection. So let's start with the actual booster pack. Let's take a look at the opening. And there it goes. The pack is open. Let's see what we're going to pull here. And this is an Orcish Spy. 1-1 one, one for 1 red. And there we go. We've got a Delph's Cone. Strange little artifact. And we've got the Night Soil. Followed by the Ecasian Money Changer. And we've got Basil Thrall with that Phil Foglio artwork. And the Thalit by Jesper Mirforce. And Thelon's Chan. This is the first uncommon. And then the last card in the booster pack. Will we find a Hand of Justice? And boom! It's the Ecation Phalanx. That is actually a powerhouse if you're playing Fallen Empire only. But it's not really the card we were hoping for. Okay, so now I'm going to um, share with you my collection of uh, Fallen Empire. And that was my brother, Yoop, who was opening a booster pack of Fallen Empires. And um, I wanted to show you this little collection here. Because my brother organized the 25-year anniversary draft for Fallen Empire um, last year, obviously, because that was in 2019. And these were cards that contestants actually got at the end of the tournament and uh, this is just a little collection to celebrate the 25 years of Fallen Empire and I just remember when this set came out I was about 11 or 12 I just started playing Magic I didn't have enough money to actually buy um, booster packs of revised so what I did is I tried to buy Fallen Empires and I just remember that every time the cards were kind of disappointing but I also really enjoyed and really loved the art and for example this Goblin Surgeon it's just so cool all the different creatures obviously here are Lanor Elves and Ufton Troll there we see some tiger skin of that legendary creature I forgot the name um, but it just had so many nice elements and this is also a card which is quite interesting. You can't really read what it does now anymore. <laughs> but I believe you can sacrifice a creature and then it turns all your forest in two, three creatures until end of turn. So that is pretty cool. You just get two, three forests. That's, that in itself must be pretty powerful. So I've always thought that this is a card that could be useful, maybe. Um, and actually, my brother said, oh, if, if you still like Fallen Empire so much, I have a present for you. And I'm like, uh, okay, what is it? And he said, here you go. I have some Fallen Empire left and I'm going to give it to you. So he actually gave me a bunch of Fallen Empire. And I said, well, that is actually great because I have a collection of Fallen Empire. So just a spoiler alert, this whole video is going to be about Fallen Empires. So if you're like, mm, I really don't like that set and it has no nostalgia for me whatsoever, just be safe, click away and be safe. But, I mean, if you're sticking around, I'm going to talk about Fallen Empires and I'm going to show uh, my Fallen Empires collection, actually. Um, that's what I'm going to do. First, going to sort these cards because what I'm trying to do is collect Fallen Empires four times. So, also every type of art I'd like to have four times. And I don't really mind if the cards are crap. So, I actually like the fact that there's a dent here. You see, there's a dent. That means there's a story and that this Orcish Captain has been used in battle. I think that's a good thing. So I don't really mind if the condition is not near mint or whatever. Um, here we go. We've got some blue mages for Dalian Mage. So I'm now just going to sort them on color. We've got Combat Medic, Barrel's Priest. We've got some Zealots here. Also a weird card. Like Fallen Empire is a set with cards that have a lot of text and then you read them and you reread them again. Look, it's... It's just weird. So this one, for example, if Feral Seelot's attacks and is not blocked, you may choose to have it deal three damage to target creature. If you do so, it deals no damage to the opponent. So it's kind of an interesting mechanic. 
And here we have some more. This one is actually quite annoying to play against because banding is, is really tough, especially when you want to deal damage as a defensive player. Banding is very useful. And Ecation Money Changer, another one of those cards with a lot of text, but it's actually not very good. And, and that's typically um, for, uh, for Fallen Empires. And this really nice is Drew Tucker art. If you like that type of art, you can just recognize it everywhere. Ecation Phalanx, that was the one of the rares that my brother pulled out of that pack. 2-4, it's actually a very strong card when you're playing a Fallen Empire only format, like we, we played the draft. This, this was just, it was so hard to get around this if your opponent would play this. You just, you just have rock solid defense. And remember, there's hardly any, there are hardly any flyers in um, Fallen Empires. Also, this one, this is a... Um, this is a rare as well, and it actually gives all the creatures that it bans with um, first strike. So that's pretty good. And Ecation Town, this is an, I love the art of this card. This I hope I to find a hand of justice in this pile of cards. I don't think so, but another Drew Tucker. So these are the white cards. I'm just gonna go through this a little bit faster now. And we've got a lot of Merfolk. That's what I like about Fallen Empires, that it opens the door to tribal again you know you can start playing merfolk you can start playing soldier you can start playing goblin because of the goblin grenades and we've got high tide beautiful art by anson Maddox. could be one maybe one of my favorite pieces of art by anson Maddox. very cool sorry for the quality of the camera it's not the best javelin ears this is a good card seriously like i played a game not too long ago against a deck a counter burn player actually that played flying man and we're playing atlantic and i had these javelin ears they were fantastic and this is a nice piece of art this is um order of light bird what i really like and i can't really show it too well here is the detail in this horse so if you have this piece of art at home take a moment to look at the detail of, of the horse it's it's very pretty it doesn't really show because my camera's crap but it's it's really pretty so we've got order of light burr we've got some more javelineers i cannot have enough javelineers they're quite handy ecation scouts this one this always surprised me why doesn't this card have flying if you make this art it should have flying if this card would have been a one one flyer for one white with an upside it would actually see a lot of play in uh, in old school magic but that's not the case. This is one of those interesting cards. It's one of the first cards that I knew about that had a different mana symbol on another colored card. So in this case, it's white, but it has all of a sudden has this red symbol showing that they're actually allied colors. And here, sacrifice a white creature to have attacking red creature deal no damage during combat this turn. So it's really nice. Actually, I'm saying allied, but of course they're not allies. They're <laughs> actually opponents. But um, anyway, for me, it was kind of new to, to see that, hey, a red symbol on a white card, that seems really odd to me. And again, I mean, you need to sacrifice a creature so that attacking red creatures don't deal damage and you even can kind of work around that. It's not a very good card, but it is an interesting card, like in terms of a lot of text and this, this whole thing that's happening. Order of Light Burr, Order of Light Beer, beautiful art. Combat Matic. This one, this one, oh, this looks like you're in a video game, actually. It doesn't look like a Magic the Gathering card to me. It more looks like a card like you're in some kind of, like I said, like a video game or something. And I do like the art a lot. It's really nice. Let's see, we have more white, more white. Oh, and there we've got some green. Let me make some space. So we've got some green. So let me say, this is the big pile I still have to sort. Uh, Elvish Fortress, the Talits. Talits are actually quite strong if you can get them on the board. I mean, it takes a while, but if, if you have the situation under control, play kind of a control build, and Talits can be quite powerful. Turex Chance. This is a really beautiful card. Richard Kane Ferguson art. Let's see what happens if I hold it really close. No, it cannot zoom. Turex Chance. Really nice. Those colors. Thrill Wizard, counters target black spell. So that's so interesting that it counters a black spell. It's a black card that counters a black spell. 
the interesting thing here is that actually the, the, the story of um, Fallen Empires is that in each color there is also a fight going on between two tribes. So in this case the Thralls are fighting against the Order of the Ebon Hand and that's why it can counter a white spell. And in white you have the um, you have the Order of Lightbur that is also fighting against against the Zealots, I guess. I would have to look it up. Um, and I know in, in, in blue you have the Merfolks that are fighting against the Hammerids. And you can when you read the flavor text as well of the cards, that kind of comes back. And the Hammerids obviously they're stronger, but the Merfolks are more intelligent. So <laughs> this this art is just funny. Mercine. And, and one of the things with Fallen Empire, the reason why it, it, it's not very popular is just because of the print run. It got printed so, so many times. I think, I actually have the numbers here. I can look them up in a moment. Thalon's Chant. So um, green is about the elves that are fighting against the Talids. Again, you have those two tri tribes that are fighting against each other. Which is kind of weird, like elves fighting against something that, that comes out of the forest as well. And this actually not, well, it's not a great card. I guess this card's better. Um, I mean, you could play this in your sideboard. It's against black. Whenever a player puts a swamp into play, Thelon Chan deals three damage to him or her, unless that player puts a minus one, minus one counter on a creature he or she controls. So this is actually, this is actually a pretty good card. This card, this card, I could, I would put in the sideboard. Spore Cloud, again, is, a, if you play Mono Green, this is a good card as well, because it's a fog, but it also taps all the creatures. And there we see a little red card here, Goblin Surgeon. I really like the Goblin art. It's so funny. This is Dan Frazier, but this is, this is my favorite Goblin Surgeon art. Yeah, we just talked about him. And we've got some more Goblins. Goblin War Drums. This card I've always find very interesting and you know it's a raiding party. Um, you can sacrifice an orc and then it destroys all the planes. So in itself it sounds like a really good card but that's when the problem happens. Your opponent can actually tap creatures to prevent uh, any planes of being destroyed. So for each creature let me see. A player may tap a white creature to prevent up to two planes from being destroyed. So if it didn't have that downside, it would actually be a pretty, in a way, useful card. But unfortunately, that's not the case. Dwarven Lieutenant, pretty nice Orcish Captain, Orcish Spy. There we go, there we see the folded one again. Pretty nice. A lot of Homerids. I think I'll have more than four of some of these cards, actually. And let's see, let's try to whoop, flip these. Order of the Ebon Hand. Centaur art. It's just so random, the art. Like here, they, here they're centaurs, the Order of the Ebon Hand. And then when you see other art, there are different creatures again. I guess it's an order, so they can have... It's not based on if you're human or orc or a cleric or... Well, a cleric is, is, is a profession and not a type of creature. But anyway, a centaur, I mean. So I guess it makes sense. Thorn Talit, this one, this, the interesting thing is if you're playing in the set, because I was playing a draft, this is one of the only direct damage cards in there. I mean, you've got Dwarfish Catapult, that's definitely the strongest, but you don't have a lot of options to just deal damage to creatures or players. So this card's actually quite strong within the set itself. And this one can give itself Hexproof. I mean, how cool is that? The downside is that it then taps itself and it doesn't untap, but still it can give itself Hexproof, which is, which is pretty awesome. We've got a tallied. I like these artifacts. This whole series that we see another one. Elfish Liar. So this is kind of like a bad giant growth. So you pay two to cast. One and tap to sack and give plus two plus two to a creature. I mean it could it could be useful. Implements of sacrifice is kind of mana ramp, two to cast, and then one and, and sack, and then you can get two mana of any one color. So it's like a very, very mediocre um, black lotus. I mean, it can make any type, you, you, you use one mana and you get two mana back in any color. So that on itself is not too bad. If the casting cost would have been zero, this card would have been insane. But of course it's not the case.
Uh, let's see, armor throw. There we've got, I like this, this art again, Richard Kane Ferguson. I really like it. Um, Basil Thrall, oh, look at that. Even more Thralls, wow. Initiates of the Evan Hand. So these two are in a, in a fight together, these two guys. The Thralls and the Initiates. The Initiate used to um, breed the Thralls for their own advantage. It would just use them. That's why all the Thralls have a sacrifice mechanic. So I really like the flavor. So Sack to get two black, Sack to get plus one, plus two. And also the, the, the flavor text connects to that story. So let, let me just share that with you. The worst thing about being a merchandary for the Ebon Hand is having to wear a dead thrall. So that's pretty gruesome. But at a certain point, the thralls, they rebel. They're like done being, they're done that they're being used as kind of as cattle. And they rebel against the initiates of the Ebon Hand. So... There we go. This is, again, this is one of those cards that's very handy because it's makes your colorless mana into black mana. If you can combine this, for example, with Drain Life, um, it can be it can be quite useful. Mind Step Throw, actually a playable card as well. The thing is, it's three, it's two black and one, and people obviously prefer Hypnotic Spectre, but this card is not too bad. I mean, if it attacks and is not blocked, you may sacrifice it to force the player in attack to, to discard three cards. So, you know, it can, you have to sacrifice your troll though, but you can just take three cards out of your opponent's hand. Another one of those um, Drew Tucker pieces of art. And Again, a kind of a sacrifice mechanic. Christopher Rush also made a lot of art for Fallen Empires. Actually, you've got really good artists. I mean, look at this. Beautiful. You've got some really good artists in 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 who've worked on the Fallen Empire set. Actually, some of the best artists in Magic ever have worked on this set. Like Mark Tedden, Melissa Benson, Christopher Rush. This is, I find this really a nice card. Yeah, really nice. Orcish Spy. That's also kind of unclear, this Orcish Spy. Is this a goblin or a spy? Orcish armies often employed the smaller, swifter, and less intelligent goblins as spies. So then why is this not a sound goblin? I think if this would have been a goblin, it would see some play. Then we've got some Orcish veterans. And then we have the dwarves, so they are fighting with the orcs. Red is actually kind of an interesting color in, in Fallen Empire because you've got dwarves, you've got orcs, and you've got goblins. So that's in a way it's kind of weird. And we've got even more. And Mercenes, Tidal Flats, and Mages. Okay, so I guess we've now organized them color-wise. And let me see, and I'm now gonna show you <laughs> my actual collection. Okay, and here we are, we are back. So I worked a little bit on the light, it's not ideal because you do see the glare, but um, this is actually, let me show you here. Um, this is one of the better cards in, in Fallen Empire, the Aioli Pile, pile aloli, 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 aloli. Anyway, I'm just going to call it aioli. Aioli is really nice if you've never tried it. It's kind of, it's Spanish mayonnaise. Very garlicky, very nice. Um, yeah, it's it's very good because it's it's too colorless and it gives you access to dark damage. So if you're not playing with, um, with red or with blue, there's actually a way to have some um, colorless removal in your deck. And especially for black decks and for white decks, this can be really useful. Um, as a matter of fact, I think... This, all these artifacts are not that bad, these these two casting cost sec artifacts. Um, and here we have the other page. Not gonna go through all the cards, I'm just gonna go and see if I can find some, um, if I found some cards that I can add to my collection. So for example here, look at this, two swords and a liar. So I can add those to my collection. So that is pretty sweet. Let me get some plastics, and I'm just gonna put them in. There we go. Dun, 
Here we go. And we've got the liar. And again, I don't think it's that bad of a card. Here we go. Interesting here, by the way, this card. Oh, camera's shaking a bit. This card is quite interesting. The Ring of Renewal. Um, I recently discovered that um, if you play this, five and tap, it says discard a card at random. If, if you don't have any cards in your hand, you don't have to discard a card and you can just draw two cards. So if you've got a really quick deck, this card can uh, this card can really refill your hand. For five mana, you get two cards. That is pretty good. So let's take a look. So we're going to go to white and here we have the combat medic. I remember seeing some of those. So let's have a look. I need two more. Let's just take out all the combat medics that we can find. Here we go. That's one. Don't see any other combat medics. No, no other combat medics. But at least it's again some more cards added to my collection. So we've got here combat medic. There we go. We've got actually two of these, so that means that these are now complete. That's pretty nice. Pretty sweet. If you're watching this video, it's probably on on the background or something. Let me know what kind of... Um, what your favorite Fallen Empire cards are. like, Because I know, I know everybody's playing him to Turak and... You know, it's playing with the uh, orders of the Evan Hand and the orders of Lightbur and all those cards. But is is there a card that you feel is not being used in Fallen Empire at the moment and and should get more attention? Like if you're playing Atlantic or Eternal Central, is there some kind of hidden gem that you think players are not using at the moment? Because you know, I always love to experiment and play with with cards that. Um, that nobody plays with. I think that's the most fun. If you can find original cards that don't see a lot of play and you're actually the one that can break it or that can find use for them, I always find that very, very nice to do. Okay, so let's have a look here. We see the Zealots and we see that, ma I don't think I saw Pharaoh's Mantle, but I think I saw a few of these Zealots in the white cards. So let's just get the white cards Again, let's have a look. See if we can find some of these Zealots. Weird creatures. Weird, another combat medic. Let me put a combat medic pile. Here we go. Feral Zealot. Richard Kane Ferguson. I mean, really the biggest names in Magic Old School have worked on this set. Melissa Benson. Edward Bard Jr. You might know him from uh, Erningen. I've got a lot of those, by the way. Um, no, I don't see a priest. No. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Look, boom, there's a priest. So that's nice, that's good. So I can add these to the collection. You know, I mean, Magic is also a collectible card game. And of course, with the internet and having, you know, everything's accessible, it's quite easy to just buy everything that you want. But I find it much more satisfying. And don't get me wrong, I buy, I buy stuff online. Of course I do. But I just find it very satisfying to get cards or trade cards. Like if you have to put some effort into it, I guess it's the only aspect of MTG Finance I like is that if cards are just really expensive to buy, you have to really save up money for them to buy them. You have to think about what you're going to buy. That's the only thing I like about it. And let's see, we've got here. I saw those as well. Let's have a look. Uh, there we go. Boom. Boom. And... Oh, there we have some more Zealots. You know, incredible how many Zealots. And that one we need. 
And we've got some javelineers. I thought I saw a few. Yeah, there we go. We just get all the javelineers out. And that's it. Okay. So that's interesting. So this art, I didn't see, unfortunately, because I still need two of those. Let's have a look. Boom, boom, boom. We've got this one. I think I'm going to put some nice relaxing music on the background when I edit these videos. And here we go. I don't think you can really see the page, can you? So I'm just going to move it. There we go. Oop. Occasion Javelineers. That's the other art. Again, Melissa Benson. Very good. There we go. Going on to the next page. Oh, look at that. I already have four of those. So now I've got six, I guess. That's a bit much. And I like these cards, these Ikeshi Lieutenant and also the Dwarven Lieutenant that you can pump your creatures. I find it very interesting. Um, let's see, Drew Tucker. What else do I need? I need the Money Changer. Don't think I saw the art of that Money Changer. Oh, wow, look at that. I've actually got it three times, my bad. Another occasion. Uh, occasion Priest, Townsfolk. No, I don't have the Lieutenant here in this list. This I find quite rare. Whenever, when I open Fallen Empire packs, I don't have that one often. So. Oh, look at that. Here, it's got damage. Like I said, I don't really mind. I actually kind of like it in a way. It means the card has a story to tell. Something happened to it. And I think that that, that should be part of Fallen Empire. Right? Like these cards would just, people would just give me these cards. And I guess that's why I, I try to brew a lot with these cards. Occasion Money Changer, such a weird card. Money Changer deals three damage to you when summoned. I mean, that alone, I, <laughs> that's just so bad. And then you've got three credit counters on it. And during your upkeep, you put a credit counter on the Money Changer. Sacrifice money changer to gain one life for each credit on it. And then again, there's another downside. Use this ability only during your upkeep. So I feel that this is just one of these cards with too many, too many downsides. You're like, if you can just sack it whenever it's it's already not great, like people would not play it. So But again, in if the, the, the draft we played, Fallen Empire draft, uh, people played this and they were quite successful because there's so little removal in Fallen Empire. So you could actually just keep it there and play very defensively and then at a certain point just add a zillion lives. Um, oh yeah, there, I've seen those. Pretty happy actually that I have a few of those because they are quite hard to find. And what else am I looking for? More occasion money changers? No. Wow, four of them actually. Okay, so we're taking those two. And occasion priests. Okay, we're taking those two. And then on the other page, we have, okay, we have some occasion scouts. Got one of those, got one of those, got one of those. And that's about it. I've got more of those. Okay. So overall, I'm actually quite happy with the cards I got. I mean, look how close my collection is getting. If you have a Fallen Empires in, um, in a binder, can you let me know, please? Because I just want to know that I'm not the only old school magic player that's crazy enough to put these cards in a separate binder and kind of collect them. Because what's, you know, what's really value? I mean, isn't the card, shouldn't you just look at each card separately? They're all pieces of art. And if, you know, art wise, I think Fallen Emperor is really a good set. There we 
we go. Get some more Drew Tucker. And I think that's what they really went for in, in Fall Empire. They really chose to go for the side of art because I agree that the cards are just, they're just not, not good enough, you know, most of the cards. If you want to use them in decks that you already had at the time, they're just not good enough. But art-wise, you know, it's a really good set. It's a really strong set. Okay, so I think this is it for white. Do we have, oh, we still got some white. Okay, we've got the orders going. Let me have a look. Uh, order of Lightbur. Actually need one more, so that's great. I don't, have we seen heroism? I'm going to check. I'm going to go back, see if we got heroism. That one. Uh, and this one and one of those. Okay, that's not too bad. So we found a few. And I actually think that um, that I have even more blue cards. So for blue, I should be able to complete even more play sets. This with Hand of Justice, that's what you want to do. That's all I'm saying. Okay, so we're gonna put these together. Let me check real quick. Barrel Sea Lot, Occasion. Oh yeah, we've already had four of those. Where is Hand of Justice? Oh, here at the bottom. Only two Hands of Justice, unfortunately. I think Hand of Justice is my favorite card in, in Fallen Empire. Deep Spawn, let's see if we have Deep Spawn. Don't think I saw it. A lot of Mercenes, Tidal Flats, Valence Soldiers, let's get those Hammer, it's more to the front. Some more Tidal Flats, some more Hammer, it's... Wow! I, I really have a lot of Hammer, it's... But no, 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 no deep spawn. So, oh, sorry, there goes the camera. Let's go. Okay, I saw that one. I saw high tight, so that's a good one. Mm, different homerate arts. Yes, yes. Mm, yes, yes. No, not really. So I guess we could we can sort these. Mm -hmm. Boom, let me show it. Mm -mm -mm. are extremely bad creatures, by the way. Two, two creatures for three? I mean, come on. The thing is, the thing is that they come in, actually, um, when they're brought into play, you put a tight counter on there during your upkeep. So there's actually, it's... They're not... They're bad, but they're not that bad. So they're three mana for two, two. And when they come into play, put a tight counter on Hammerite. When it is brought into play and during your upkeep, if there is not, if there's one tight counter on Hammerite, it gets minus one, minus one. If there are three counters on it, it gets plus one, plus one. So it comes into play as a one, one, which is pretty bad for three mana. But then the next turn, it turns into a two, two. And the turn after that, it actually turns into a three, three. Right, so it's it's there are only a few situations where the Hammerite is only a one-one creature, so it's not it's bad, but it's not that bad. And you, you have to you have to understand that when you're a three-three creature in Fallen Empire, that's actually pretty big. And I know that sounds ridiculous if you compare it to the today's standards, but it's in in, in Fallen Empire, it's really big. Okay, we've got some more Hammerite action going, so. That's nice, that one's finished. Um, that one's done. There we go, two of those. Two of those. 
No, no, no. Oh, too bad. I was actually hoping for some of these, the Hummer Shaman, which I find quite an interesting card. First of all, the, the art I really, really like. Again, great artist, Amy Weber. And what it does, you can pay one um, blue and then it says tap a green creature. So that's a pretty unique ability to have. It would just say pay blue, tap a creature. It would be much more playable. Okay, then we're going here, Hummer at Warrior. And put this in. Let's take a look. So we have this Hummer at Warrior. Mm-hmm. We have this one. Another playset complete. This is Douglas Schuler. Okay. That's Douglas Schuler is the same artist that made the art for Protocol Sorcerer, so they made the art for Timmy. There we go. So look at this, almost complete. I just need two more of those. That's going really well. And then, oh, we're in the Mersine, Mersine department. Mercy, mercy, like boom. This is so Drew Tucker. Like you recognize Drew Tucker art everywhere. I think that's that's a sign of being a good artist if people can recognize your art from a distance. Okay. So this is quite nice. This is a whole page that's now finished thanks to this new new donation that is pretty sweet and there we go and here we have another one Let me know, by the way, if you like these, these sorting videos or if you think they're kind of a bore. Just let me know. Maybe I'll make more. Uh, so we need the priest. Let me look. I don't, I don't think I have the priest. I don't think I saw that one. So we've got title flats. Title, title, if you have the time to read this Bible here, don't. Because it's title flats. It's really a useless card. Um, title flats. Okay. I mean, title flats is just really a bad card. Oh, look at that. I've got a priest. That's interesting. That's nice. This is interesting. It's target creature may not be the target of spells or effects until end of turn. Again, the problem is only during your upkeep. If you could use this in response, it would be kind of like a counter spell against removal. But unfortunately, you have that upkeep rule again. That's really ruining the playability of this card, actually. And it's also until end of turn, so it's not like until your next turn. So only for your own turn, it's protecting your creature. I mean, I guess if you want to, to use that creature that turn, you already know that you want to use it. You can kind of force action from your opponent by saying, I'm going to protect it. And then your opponent will play out their removal early in the turn. but. Yeah, it's not, I mean, you have to invest two blue mana as well, and you're playing blue, so you don't want to invest two blue mana in that. You would rather keep a counter spell open. It's really, it's one of those cards that, that, that in my opinion, is really unplayable. I, I cannot see how, how that card could be useful. Boom, boom. And there we go. Really nice to get these complete. One more of those, one more of those. Richard King Ferguson art, like you recognize it everywhere as well, the Richard King Ferguson art, beautiful art. Um, no, that's about it. Foldalian Mage, interesting card. Uh, one blue and tap and it counters target spell. 
Um, and then the caster can actually pay um, one colorless to cancel that counter. But at least you can play it as an interrupt, so you can do it whenever you want to. And what if you have multiple of these on the board? Then it's going to be really difficult for your opponent to cast something. These, I, I, I think these can be still can be useful, or at least at least annoying for your opponent. I would like to I would like to test these out and see if I, if, if they're actually playable. What the effect is in the game? If you've tested these out, the full daily mage, let me know because I'm curious. Because I like I mean we all know. When you build a Murfolk deck in old school, we know the direction you're going to go, right? And I, I, I always find it kind of boring when you know the direction. So what if you want to build a Murfolk deck that's much more about control? Use Sea Singers, use Murfolk Assassins, use, um, what's it called again, From the Dark to give creatures Island Walk. You know, you go more on the, on the Murfolk control route. So you play with a lot of maybe bounce effects as well, counter spells. I mean, that could be interesting. Instead of playing an aggro, you're going to play control. Why not? Ooh, that's too bad because I have so many of those. Ah, that's too bad. Okay, so that's it for blue. And I'm just going to save the video here and I'll be right back. I'm just going to get something to drink. And then we'll start with sorting black. We have reached the black part of the Fallen Empires collection. And uh, let's see, of course, we're starting with the A here with the Armor Thrall. So let's see if we can, can find a couple of Thralls. Let's see. The Crides, Orders, Mind Stabbers, Initiates. We can put it over here. Hey, there we go. Armor Thrall, Basil Thrall, Armor Thrall, another one. Another armor, more basils here. Mm. Basil Thrall, again, interesting card. It's kind of like a mini, um, let's see if I can, if I can fix the camera a little bit here with the angle to focus. Yeah, so it's a little bit like, um, it's a little bit like a mini Dark Ritual. It's again one of those cards that I think, hmm, maybe they could be useful. You know, if you've got one of those other uh, saving lands, maybe just one of those black lands, you know, that you can save their Fallen Empire as well, and then maybe play a really big Drain Life, I don't know. Or ramp up to a bigger spell, like a, um, a Nightmare or something. Let me have a look. So this one, that's quite nice, is now also complete. Let me show you. This one is now also complete, so I have all four of these. This is the one that I'm still missing. Of course, it's Ron Spencer, so yucky. This is the one I'm missing. And there we have Armor Thrall. Put it in there. Oop. And there we go to the basil thralls. So, like I said, you know, I find that quite an interesting card, basil thrall. I really like the art of this one, by the way. Christopher Rush. Look at those colors. It's really nice, and the movement in the picture. It's like coming. It's coming at you. It's really nice. Uh, Breeding Pit, Dara Lores, I don't think, no, they're not in here, unfortunately. Dara Lore is another one of those cards that I know some people play, um, and they actually don't play them in black decks. They just splash them in, because for Dara Lore, it's quite nice. It's actually a 4-4 for four. four, four. Um, and the downside is your black spells cost one black more to cast. But if you don't play with black, that's actually not a downside. So it's quite nice to, to, to splash in. And a 4-4 four, for four, 4 in old school is pretty powerful. Of course you have Suchi, but when you Suchi gets killed in EC and Atlantic or with Mana Burn, you get 4 damage. So Daryl Lord can kind of help. 
Hey, and there we see the Hemt Turek collections. This, of course, is the favorite Hemt Turek for many people with the wolf. Um, I actually have one signed Hemt Turek. There you go. Which I, it looks quite nice. It's done with those um, ballpoint pens. So not with those official sign markers that artists tend to use now, Sharpies, I guess, but that's quite nice. I'm really happy that I have that. I was able to buy that online. Uh, Initiates of the Ebon Hand. Let's see if I have a few of those. Okay, those Basil Trolls, we've now, we're done with those. I see some Initiates, but not the ones that I'm looking for. Uh, no, 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 no. Okay, so not a lot of black actually. Let's take a look. So there we go, two initiates. This one already have that complete. And order of the Evan Hand, we're not there yet. So I guess we're at the mind steps. So I've got that one complete. That one I don't, so that's nice. That I do. Necrite, a beautiful art by Ron Spencer, and I only have two, so I actually need more of those, so that's actually good. And let's first do these. Let's have a look here. So, Initiates of the Evan Hand, another playset complete. I'm curious um, if you're watching, if you would you play Mind Step Thrall? over Hypnotic Spectre? And if so, when would you do that? In what kind of build? What's your idea behind that? Like for example, I have a Thrall build where obviously I choose the Mind Step Thrall because I'm just playing with Thralls in the deck. So there's more synergy. But I must say the fact that um, Hypnotic Spectre is flying, that's such an added value if you compare that with these Mind Step Trolls. Let's get this in here, so. Yeah, four of these. Pretty happy. I mean, I'm actually thinking about um, maybe making some just Fallen Empire only decks and maybe have some games with that. Got a message from um, Enrico from Venice who told me that he was actually working on making um, a few Fallen Empire theme decks and I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Maybe we can have some games. And here we see some Necrites. I'm going to put them there. We've got some Drew Tuckers. There we again, we have the Mind Steps. Too many Mind Steps. Orders of the Evan Hand we've got here. I need this art, which is, I think, the best art for the Orders, maybe. Uh, I don't have them. Although I really like the Christopher Rush art as well. It's just, it's just beautiful, just beautiful. I mean, I, just, I know I keep saying it, but art-wise, I think this is really a high-valued set. It should be a really high-valued set. Look at this art, you know, with Christopher Rush. I think he was maybe at his best when he did Fallen Empire. Because they're just, his, his art is so, there's so much movement in his, art pieces for Fallen Empire. So let's see, Necrite, we talked about it a little bit. It's one of those cards, just like the Zealots, that when it's unblockable, unblocked, it can do something. So if Necrite attacks and is not blocked, you may sacrifice it to bury a target creature controlled by the player Necrite attack this turn. Again, interesting to note is that in this set, you don't have cards like Terror, you don't have cards like Lightning Bolt, so just removal in any way is actually valuable. So in a draft, you could really consider playing Necrite in your in your deck. And I'm actually having a Fallen Empire draft coming up with a booster pack of the dark as well. So that's going to be quite interesting. And I'm going to try to film that also, of course. Maybe stream it, who knows. See, so these are complete, four orders. Happy with that. Soul Exchange is quite an interesting card as well, by the way. 
Let me put this in the sleeve. It says, sacrifice a creature but remove it from the game instead of putting it in your graveyard. Take a creature card from your graveyard and put it directly into play as though it were just summoned. And then there's some edit text. You can put a plus two plus two counter on it if you used a thrall uh, to sacrifice. So I, I find that quite interesting, especially when you combine it with, I guess it's on this page. Or did we, okay, I guess we passed that one already. Um, if you can combine it with Breeding Pit, here with Breeding Pit with this card. So Breeding Pit is gonna make you a bunch of 01 Thrall Tokens. And then you can sacrifice those to your Soul Exchange and get like a really cool creature for it in return with a plus two plus two counter on it. So that seems like a pretty good trade. Thrall Champion is my card here that uh, I only have one measly Thrall Champion. So Thrall Champion is really the card that I'm looking for whenever I'm opening um, Fallen Empire Booster Packs. Uh, Thrall Wizard, so that's pretty nice. Uh, Turex Chance, so I've got four of those now. That's pretty cool. Would you play Thrall Wizard as and in your sideboard, I mean, a lot of players actually play with the two black cards, Demonic Tutor and uh, Mind Twist. So with the Thrall Wizard, you could counter that. And they're going to have a hard time paying the cost for it. Well, at least the one black. If it would, this is one of those cards, again, if it would just say counter a black spell and that's it, then you could somehow find some use for it in your sideboard. But because it's... You can still, your opponent can still play a black or three to cancel the counter effect. It's like, it's completely useless. That has made it completely useless. Um, this card's pretty strong as well. During your upkeep, pay one or destroy Turex Chant. Whenever a player puts a forest into play, Turex Chant deals three damage to him or her unless that player puts a minus one, minus one counter on target creature he or she controls. So you have a black version and you have a green version of this as well. I'm sure we're going to see that later while we are sorting. And um, again, beautiful art here. Richard Kane Ferguson, just that's beautiful art, beautiful art. I know I keep rambling on about the art, but I just think the art is fantastic in this set. Um, let's have a look. So we've got Dwarven, we've got Orcish Spies, a lot of Orcish Spies, Orcish Veterans, we've got Brass Claw Orc, so we're gonna move that to the front. Even more Orcish Spies. We've got Dwarven Lieutenant, that's nice. Orcish Captain, even more, I've got like tons of spies now. I, I think I can now make a deck with only Orcish Spies. That would be funny. Dwarven Soldiers, even more Spies, Captains, Brass Claw Orcs. We've got a Raiding Party. Goblin War Drums, and kind of trying to quickly sort it here. Wow, look at all, all the drums. Uh, more drums, more drums. Okay. The first thing we're looking for are brought Brass Claw Orcs. So let's just get those out. Kind of the Wolverine look here, right? Like the, <laughs> the ugly ugly cousin of Wolverine or something. I don't know what's what's going on with that card. Rob Alexander, who's who's known for his work on the dual lands, by the way. Um, okay, so this one I can put in. I'm running out of sleeves, by the way. I need to get some more sleeves. I didn't expect to be able to put so many cards in. Here we go. Number three, only one more I need. And wow, I actually have all the Wolverines already. I've now got a double play set of Wolverine. Um, if you like this play set of Wolverine Fallen Empire cards, just uh, leave a comment, tell me what you wanna go and, uh, and do with them and I'll, I'll send them to you. So let me know. Uh, Brass Claw Orcs, Wolverine. Okay, you've got Orcs staring at a map. That's not, I mean, can he even read a map? 
Brass claws were typical orcs, quick to laud their own prowess in battle, quick to jeer at their opponents, and quicker still to run away when things started to look slightly dangerous. Yeah, nice. Brass claw orcs, so. It's so funny because it cannot be assigned to block any creature with power greater than one. Still, it's it's a good creature. I mean, for three mana, you get three power, which is not too bad. And you want to attack with them anyway. You don't want to block with these. So I don't care if, they, if they're not great blockers. Um, Let's take a look. So we've got the dwarves. Let's see what we have in Dwarven Land. I don't think I saw a Dwarven Catapult. We've got here Dwarven Soldiers. Even more Orcish Spies. Another Dwarven Lieutenant. That's about it. And I've actually run out of sleeves, so I guess I have to put these in sleeveless and try to find me some sleeves later. So let's just put these in. Dwarven Lieutenant by Jeff Mingus. Funny story about Fallen Empire is that when Fallen Empire came out, it used to be the case with uh, products from Wizards of the Coast is that you would order your products and you would only get 10, um, you would only get 10% delivered of what you ordered. So if you would, would be um, a game store in LGS, and this is, by the way, the first binder. I have a, a second one that's over here where the Fallen Empire story continues. Uh, but what I wanted to say is when you uh, would order like a hundred boxes of something, uh, you would only get 10 boxes. So if you would order Legends or in those days then Revised, you would only get a couple of cases. And what people did when, when Fallen Empire came out, they said, okay, I'm just going to order 10 times as much as that I actually need for my store because then I'll have enough. But then what happened is WotC started to really deliver. So if you would order 100 boxes or 1,000 boxes of Fallen Empire, you would actually get 1,000 boxes of Fallen Empire. Can you imagine that? You get 10 times more than you actually need. And that is one of the reasons that Fallen Empire has been so, like, I wouldn't say hated, but just it was so overprinted, you saw it everywhere. So you could always get Fallen Empire cards. And that's, that's actually what I liked about Fallen Empires. Goblin War Drums, quite interesting. This is a very good uh, enchantment, by the way. Very interesting. You can give a creature flying. And then, um, let, let me see. Okay, so a target creature you control, which cannot have a toughness greater than two. So toughness, so it can have a power greater than two. So you can give those brass claw orcs that we looked at earlier, you can give them flying with this. It's actually what I did in one of my, my decks. Um, and until end of turn. So at the end of the turn, you need to flip a coin and opponent calls, calls hats or tails while the coin is in the air. If the flip ends up in the opponent's favor, bury the creature. So the nice thing here is you give it flying, it deals damage, and then at the end of the turn, maybe it dies, but who cares? I mean, it gave damage. So you can basically turn your uh, Brass Claw Orcs into Lightning Bolts. So that's not too bad. You're probably thinking, but that's really bad. But in, 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 um, in, um, in Fallen Empire, that's actually not really bad. Let's see, did I miss something here? No, I did not. Let's see, oh, this one is a great one. This is a token maker, very unique in those days. Sacrifice two goblins to put three goblins into play. Treat these tokens as one one red creatures. The nice thing about this is you can do this after your attack step. So you can attack with your three goblins uh, or two goblins, they're tapped. You've dealt damage with them and then you can sack them. You can even sack them during combat. If your opponent is doing a combat trick, you can sack in response. So it's a very useful card. Uh, really nice. If, if you get this going, um, you know, your opponent is really in big trouble. Okay, we see I still have some Goblin War Drums here. Let's have a look. Uh, no, 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 no. That's a nice thing. That's so funny about Fallen Empire. You're looking for specific art. You know, like Goblin War Drums has four different types of art. And Goblin Grenade has three different types of art. 
It's funny how that works. Uh, Orcish Captain only has one type of art. Let me see some here, but I think I saw another one. Let's see if we can find it. Yeah. So my Orcish Captain collection is complete. I now have a full play set of Orcish Captains. Yes. And Orcish Spy I have as well. So that is also complete. And let's see, Orcish Veteran. Mm, let's go, Orcish Spies is all complete. We've got some veterans over there. We've got a veteran, we've got a veteran. Raiding party. Okay, so we can put this one over here. Another one complete. Orcish Veteran, again, they cannot... Oh, this one cannot block any white creatures with far greater than one, so it can block the other creatures, and you can actually give it the first strike. So, you know, again, it's not it's not a very good creature, but it's, it's not that bad. I mean, you can give it first strike. That, that makes it a potential potentially a very good blocker. But you don't really want to do that with Orcs. Raiding Party, we talked about that earlier. Beautiful art by Clinton Hoover. And now we're going to enter green, and that's the last color, of course. So we're almost done with sorting. And we're all, that means we're also almost done with this video. Let me know if you like these videos. Um, you know, and if you don't, be kind, please. Uh, let's see, Talon's Chant. So Talon's Chant is the opposite of... The black card that we talked about with the beautiful Richard King for Rusen art. Talon's Curse. I think the chant is better than the curse, to be honest. And we've got some more tallies, we've got some night soils, but we're looking for elves. Elven Fortress. Elven Fortress, Elven Fortress. Okay, so I think. So these are complete. Personally, and you know, I'm, I'm quite positive with cards and trying to find a place for them in decks, but Elvish Fortress is a difficult one because it, you know, you have to tap a green and a colorless, which is quite an investment. And what you get back is not that much. Target blocking creature gets plus O plus one. Again, I like the art by Tom uh, Wannerstrand. How do you pronounce that? Um, I know him from Blood Moon, but I know him also from Ghost Ship. And he, he enjoys drawing ships, by the way. Very, very nice artist. Um, Elvis Fortress here. So we have that complete. Oh, I've got all my Elvis Fortresses now complete. Oh, wow. That is nice. Let's take a look. Oh, this card, by the way, actually sees some play. I don't know in what format, but it has value and it sees some play. It's the Elvish Farmer. During your upkeep, put a spore counter on the farmer and remove three spore counters for one one green creature. It's a proling. Um, but what it can also do is sacrifice the proling to gain two life. I think that's probably the reason why it has value if you're building a proling deck. Um, we're actually, I don't have any fungal blooms or anything. Um, so we're going to look at the Night Soils. Night Soils in multiplayer is actually pretty handy. So I wonder, I don't play any other formats but old school, but if you're playing um, Commander, let me know. Let me know if you play, if you think Night Soil could be good in Commander. Maybe it is already. Like I said, I don't play those formats, so I have no idea. Unfortunately, not any other Night Soils. Let's take a look. Spore clouds. I think I saw a lot of spore clouds. Let's see. One, two, boom. So they are complete. And that's about it. So we're seeing some more spore clouds. I guess I'm not going to say it, but I'm sure this reminds you of something. Um. Too bad with the art, actually. Oh, wait a minute. Almost missed it. Boom. Two more of these. So they're now also complete. 
And the great thing about Spore Cloud is that it is actually uh, tap all blocking creatures. No creatures deal combat damage in combat this turn. Neither attacking nor blocking creatures untap as normal during their controller's next untap phase. So this can really ruin your uh, the plans of your uh, opponent. So it's quite nice. It taps everything down. There's no damage. And then it's your turn. And because you probably haven't declared any blockers because you, you, know, you played the Spore Cloud. So attacking creatures are not going to deal damage anyway. Um, you can then attack him. So it's it's quite nice. Oh, the Talids. Let's see. These Talids. See if I can find them. There we go. Mm. Thorn Talids. Thorn Talids. Okay. At least one. So that's nice. And then we're moving on. To these. Talit, I think, is a pretty use, useful creature because it's a 1 1 with an upside. So during your upkeep, you can put a support counter on the Talit, three, remove three of them. I mean, the chance is it's really pretty big when you play this that your opponent is not going to remove it because it's like, yeah, I don't want to waste removal on it. And then before you know it, it kind of starts multiplying itself. And your opponent will probably regret uh, his decision. So it's actually, it's one of those cards when you play with it, you realize it's actually not that bad. Thorn Tally, no, no, that's not the one. Interesting, right? So Tally Devourer is not in sight. I really like that uh, uh, Tally Suprolling theme in Fallen Empires. But I, I'm, I'm the kind of player that always enjoys building something, so. There we go. Um, okay, I saw those. And there we have another one. And we've got this one. I'm gonna put this one over here. This is this is, this is one of those odd cards, by the way, in Fallen Empire. It's just a very strange effect. Uh, Thelonite Monk, and sacrifice a green creature to turn target land into a basic forest. Mark change land with a counter. Just fascinating effect. Just, it, 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 it changes it permanently, right? So even if you remove this, the land is still change, it still change, uh, stays a forest. So just wanted to share that very odd card. And we've got the lovely lands where you can kind of keep it tapped in it gets extra, gets storage counters to storage lands here. And that's it. Maybe you're wondering what these are. They're actually pretty cool. Um, I'm not gonna take them out because it took me a lot of work to get them in like this. These are actually the, um, the counters, official counters from Fallen Empires. So these are the first, you could say, token cards that ever existed in Magic the Gathering. Well, this was it. This was my uh, my sorting movie. It took a little bit longer than I actually anticipated. Wow, I mean, wow. This is the longest video I've made so far. It's over an hour of talking about Fallen Empires, Fallen Empires, and Fallen Empires. Let me know what you think of these type of sorting videos. Do you like them? Would you like me to make more? And let me know what you think of the set Fallen Empires. Did you learn something from this video? Can you teach me something? Are there facts about Fallen Empires? That, heart, that you know nobody knows about but you please share what's your favorite fallen empire card do you play a lot of fallen empires and do you agree that fallen empire is more than just him to turek and goblin grenade i'm sure you do if you've watched this video i'm sure you do um thank you if you want to support the channel you can do so by watching the videos which you're already doing so thank you very much for that you can also just like leave a comment i would love to hear from you um, you can click the notification bell so that you get notified when videos like these are uh, coming online on the channel. You'll be the first one to know. And we also have a Patreon page and then you can support the show financially. Talking about Patreon, I want to thank my patrons for their support and making it possible for me to keep this channel going. Let's take a look at the end scroll and let's take a look at the patrons of Timmy Talks. So we